ask the same question for the electricity. When I ask the question in chapter 23, where do you have to put a third charge so experiences no force? Did it matter if that third charge was a negative or a positive? The answer is no. It didn't matter if the charge was negative, positive. Okay? So go back and review that uh, chapter 23. If you put a positive charge in the middle, this one will uh, repel it. This one will attract it. If you put a negative charge in the middle, this one will attract it. That one will repel it. So whether it's positive or negative, you cannot put it in the middle between the two charges. You're going to have to put it to the left closer to the weaker charge. Whether it's positive, negative, doesn't matter. All right? So uh, this one, if it's positive, it's going to repel it. This one will attract it. And if it's negative, this one will attract it. That one will repel it. So it doesn't matter. The magnitude of that charge and the direction, the, the sign of that charge doesn't matter on that question. Okay? Same thing here. It doesn't matter where I, uh, it doesn't matter if I put that wire here going into the board or out. So I can assume, for example, the current is coming out of the board. And then I can go through my arguments. I can say, uh, this one, if I put it here, this one will um, attract it, right? They're both out of the board. This one will repel it. So I cannot put it in between the two. Or if, if, or if I had a current that is going into the board, same thing. This one will now repel it. This one will attract it. And I can't put it in between either. So in your, in your argument, as you're arguing that, it really doesn't matter if it's going in or out, out of the board. So where would I have to put it? I would have to put it closer to the weaker current on the right side of the weaker current, right? So let's say somewhere here. Now I can say, I can go through the argument. I can say this one is going to uh, op uh, opposites, uh, uh, opposites uh, repel. And this one is going to attract that one, same. So they're going to cancel, right? OK, so now let's find that position. So let's call that position x0. So the force on this, due to that wire, so let's put it like this. Uh, the force on, uh, let's call this one, let, this is, let's call this one wire 2 since that current is called I2. So the, this, uh, this one will do what to this? Um, um, this one is opposite, so it's going to repel it, right? So this is F2, right? And then this one is going to attract that one. So this is F1. So I'm going to argue the magnitude of F2 has to equal the magnitude of F1. OK? So the magnitude of F2 is mu0 I2 times the current of that, which we can call I3, times L divided by 2 pi times this distance between this and this. So the absolute value of that distance, that's x minus 2, right? Absolute value of x minus 2. That's going to equal mu 0 times the force between the wire 1 and 3. So i1, i3 times L over 2 pi x minus negative 3. OK? So a bunch of things should cancel now. Mu 0, mu 0 should cancel. 2 pi, 2 pi should cancel. I3, I3 should cancel. So it, show, it should not depend on the current of that wire, which is uh, exactly right. 
So I2 is going to be 0.8. I1 is going to be 1.2. After that, it's a pretty easy problem. You could uh, cross multiply. You could just move the decimal over and you just have 8 and 12. And so cross multiply, you have uh, 8x plus 24 is equal to uh, 12x minus 24. And then you have uh, 4x is equal to um, 48. x equals 12. That's it. So if you put a wire at the point 12, 0, it's going to experience no force. OK. Um, so it's got to be closer to the weaker current. If the two currents were the same, what would happen? Let's say they were both 1.2 amps. Yeah, then there is no such place where you can put it where a wire experiences no force. If they were the same, if they were the same magnitude but opposite direction, you could not place a wire anywhere where it experiences no force. How about if they were the same magnitude but same direction? Then you could, you could put it in the center, yeah. Same magnitude, same direction. You could put the wire in the center, the third wire in the center, and then you would be no force. OK, cool. OK, now let's go to um, part C. Find the total. Let's redraw this. Uh, this is going to be uh, negative 3, 0. This is. And then I asked you to find the magnetic field at a point of 3, 4, right? So somewhere like this. OK, so we're going to have to do a little bit of the same geometry type of things that we did in chapter 23. OK, we're going to have to say this is, the, this is the second wire, right, I2. OK, what's the direction of the magnetic field created by this at that location? OK, so again, you're going to have to apply the right-hand rule. Uh, this is going into the board, and the uh, magnetic field created goes in a circle, right? Around it, this way. So at that location, the magnetic field is this way, perpendicular to the line made between this and that point, right? And then uh, the magnetic field created by this point, it's coming out of the board, so it goes like that. So it goes clockwise uh, this way, or counterclockwise this way. So it's perpendicular like this. You see, so this is perpendicular. So it depends on which one is bigger, which one is going to win. They look like it looks like they're competing, right? So. You're going to have to now just define a certain angle. Uh, OK, so let's uh, define this angle as, uh, let me, you know what, let me draw this a little, a little lower. Let's say the point was here. Call this alpha, 